This is my Alexander Model 3A pantograph engraving and milling machine. It's a 2D and 3D capable machine, meaning that I can mill and engrave on flat surfaces in two dimensions. It also has a pivot point over here where I can machine and engrave three-dimensional parts such as uh, molds, convex, concave parts. Uh, these are pre-CNC machines and really when CNC came around these machines kind of died off. They were used to make more complex parts than what a traditional three-axis uh, knee type milling machine or a lathe could produce. So some really cool capabilities in this and also following really my brand ethos of everything being uh, by hand, so no CNC equipment in my shop. So I'm able to make some more complex parts. Uh, I picked this up in order to do some more complex engraving and machining on my watch dials. Uh, I'll be able to engrave case backs on my own. Uh, I can use it to make some more complex parts such as bracelet links. So I might be able to um, make some viable uh, bracelet options within my brand, so I'm pretty excited about that too, and a whole host of other things. So I'll be able to make straight line pattern bars for my straight line machine, and potentially even uh, mill my own rosettes on this machine. I had been looking to pick one up for a while, really for a couple of months, uh, but when I saw Dean's video, Dean DK uh, on YouTube, when I saw his video, I knew that there's no time like the present. So I was scouring the internet and I actually found a machine reseller that was about an hour south of me who had this machine. Uh, so I drove down there, saw the machine. Uh, it had been sitting around for a long time, really in the back of their warehouse for probably 10 years. So the tables were covered in surface rust as well as all the ways, all the moving parts, the spindle was seized up and the downfeed lever had been broken off at some point. So I knew the machine needed some love, so I was able to negotiate the price down from that. Uh, but what really sold me on the machine is I checked all the pivot points, everything moved freely. There's no slop in the pivoting arms, the bearings on the spindle and on the change pulley uh, spun freely with no grinding noise and not any play. So I knew that the machine had good structure. So I brought it home. I doused all the ways and the tables in WD-40. And then I used a gray scotch bright pad to remove all of the surface rust from the tables and the ways. After I removed the surface rust uh, from the ways and the scale arms here, the, the moving scale arms, uh, I could tell that the machine really didn't see that much use in its lifetime. All of the original scraping that Alexander had put on the machine when it was produced really came through uh, underneath the surface rust. So that was really exciting to see. Um, the spindle was completely rusted over and seized um, aside from the bearings in the uh, spindle, but the feed mechanism just wasn't working. So I pulled it all apart, completely disassembled it. I rehoned the spindle carriage here, uh, cleaned all the parts up, gave them a thorough cleaning, thorough lubrication, Put it all back together. I also machined this downfeed lever out of 316 stainless. Uh, put it all back together and it's working great. So now the quick downfeed works as well as the fine downfeed. I'm excited to get this machine in use and start producing some parts for my watches on it. Today we're going to go through just a quick demonstration. Really this is my first time trying out this process, but I'm going to be machining a chapter ring. I have a 3D printed pattern that I printed last night and got it cleaned up a little bit. So it's my first time using a 3D printed pattern, my first time uh, engraving and milling a chapter ring on this machine. So pretty excited to see how it comes together. So let me get the machine set up. Let me get my pattern and my part clamped into the tables here and everything aligned and then we'll bring you back in for a closer look at how the machine operates. All right, so I have my 3D printed pattern here, which is a two times scale, basically of the chapter ring that I'm looking to reproduce. So it has 12 indices, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock are a little bit longer than the other hours. Um, and then the total thickness will be around a hundred thousandths of an inch. So my stylus that I'm using, I turned it down on my lathe. So I turned down a very fine point. Uh, I don't think you can see it here, but on the bottom it's uh, 50 thousandths in diameter. And that's what I also scaled each of these indice markers at. Over here, I have my workpiece set up. So it's just a piece of German silver. 
uh, 32 thousandths thick, uh, about two inches by two inches square. The overall diameter is just gonna be right around an inch. I have a 60 degree single flute engraver set up in here. So I also have my ratio set two to one. So that's what this pattern is set up for. So I scaled it two to one. So I modeled this in Fusion 360 in one to one scale. So I modeled it how I wanted the actual part to be. And then Fusion 360 has a great feature where you're able to just scale by ratio. So I just scaled it up by two and uh, I was good to go. So I printed it out. So I have my cutter set already. So when I am fully fed down on the quill, the cutter just touches the workpiece. So I want to engrave 10 thousandths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is unlock my Z axis on this table here, and then I'm going to feed it up by 10 thousandths and then lock it back into place. So now when I engage my fast down feed, my cutter will protrude into the workpiece by 10 thousandths of an inch. On my stylus, what I'm probably gonna do in the future is set up a spring-loaded stylus. So as a fixed stylus is set up, uh, there's two options you can do. You can constantly loosen and tighten the collet that holds your stylus in place to lift it up and down to move from indice to indice, which is really inconvenient. Uh, but the pattern table also has a Z-axis feed. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna feed down by 100 thou, move over to my indices, feed up until my stylus locks in to the slot. So I'm gonna do that right now at 12 o'clock. So I'm just gonna pull my table up and guide my stylus into place. So there it is, so now it's locked into place. No left and right movement. So now I'm ready to engrave my 12 o'clock index. So let me get this camera rolling here so we can get a good shot of the cut. So the machine is fairly loud, uh, a little squeal when it starts up. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. So we're just going to uh, go through this cut and then I'll move around the indices until I have all 12 of my indices engraved on my piece of German silver. So let's go ahead and get started.
right, a couple problems encountered. Uh, so when I was copying my pattern at three o'clock, the 3D mold actually fractured out a little bit, uh, but I was able to just drive my stylus in a little bit deeper to compensate that for that. So I think that was okay. Uh, I don't know if my cutter depth was set up right. So I could tell some of the portions weren't engraving as deep as others. So I just used my fine down feed to dive in a little bit further and just kind of engraved it by feel. I think this cutter might actually not be sharp enough. Yeah, it looks like it lost its point. So it kind of widened out. So 12 o'clock through two o'clock looked pretty good. And then I think my cutter started having some problems. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is swap out this cutter for one that's a little bit sharper and then uh, go through the same exercise here. All right, so I got the cutter swapped out with a fresh one that's sharp. I think the issue I ran into is I was just down feeding this cutter in too fast. It's some cheap Chinese cutter from Amazon. So there's a local supplier that I'm gonna go check out and get some carbide cutters and just some higher quality cutters. So I think that's the issue I ran into. So I swapped the cutter out uh, and now I'm going to use my quick down feed to get relatively in position of each of these slots. And then I'm going to engage my fine down feed just a little bit, which is gonna allow me to keep this cutter in shape, hopefully, and get a little bit cleaner cuts. I'm gonna end up sanding all of the uh, burrs flat anyways, after I do the, the milling operation to cut it out of the circle here. So I'm not too concerned about it and they're gonna be filled with paint or loom either way. So not, uh, too critical, uh, but I am just gonna go through each one of these once again and get everything cleaned up. So let me fire the machine up and we'll get started. There we go, that's looking a lot better. So we can see the engravings are significantly deeper now, but also more consistent. And I can't feel any noticeable burrs sticking up and the cutter looks like it's still intact. So much better result on that second go around with the uh, modified feed process. Uh, once again, my 3D pattern fractured. So learning a couple lessons here if I'm gonna be using 3D printed uh, patterns, I need to build in bigger wall thickness so that they're not fracturing and, and splitting out like that. Didn't affect the cut whatsoever, um, but it may affect the milling operation that comes up next. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so what I'm gonna do next now that I have each of the indices engraved, I'm going to swap out my cutter. I'm gonna be using an eighth inch carbide end mill, a four flute end mill. Uh, which cuts this German silver really well. I'm also gonna change my stylus out. Because I'm using a two to one ratio, if I'm using an eighth inch cutter, I need to use a cutter that is twice that diameter. So what I did is on my lathe, I just turned a mild steel uh, half inch bar, turned the tip down to quarter of an inch, which is twice the thickness of an eighth inch cutter. So I'm gonna swap my stylus in, swap my cutter out, uh, and then come back and we are going to mill the chapter ring out. So we're gonna start on the inside and then mill the outside. So I'm gonna bring you back in a second after I get everything swapped out and we'll take a look and see how this works out. All right, so now I have my quarter inch stylus in place and I have it set inside the pattern here so I can mill out the inner pocket. I also have my eighth inch four flute carbide end mill in the spindle. So now the next operation is just gonna be milling out the inner pocket. So it's my first time uh, attempting this. So we'll see how it goes. Let me fire up the machine. Uh, I have the spindle set already to down feed and fine feed, fine feed 10 thousandths into the material. This is 32 thousandths thick. So I'm just gonna take 10 thou passes until I cut through. It's just super glued onto a uh, sacrificial piece of aluminum.
All right, there's the inside of the chapter ring cut out. Uh, a couple issues that I'm noticing right away. So initially what I had planned on doing was when I designed this chapter ring template and my stylus, I was expecting to get an end mill that matched the stylus and matched these indices. Unfortunately, that uh, never arrived. So uh, that's when I switched to using just the engraver cutter. And when I had to reset because the cutter wasn't, uh, it lost its point and I cut deeper, it also pushed it closer to the edges. So I can see that some of the uh, larger hour indices are pushing into the center, which means that they'll probably also be pushing into the outer edge. So I'll just go ahead and set up and cut the uh, outer edge and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, this isn't actually going to become a piece. So like I said, this is the first time I'm attempting this process. So just kind of working out some kinks and uh, figuring out how I'm going to do it moving forward. So let me just uh, reset my stylus. All right, so there it is. Uh, requires a little bit of cleanup around the edges, the super glue let loose. So I'm gonna take a look and see what other kind of attachment methods I can use to hold the piece down. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the first attempt here. So I'll take a file, I'll clean it up. Uh, I'm gonna just use some sandpaper and just grain it real quick, take the burrs down. Maybe I'll put a little bit of paint in the indices to really kind of let those indices pop. So. Let me uh, fiddle around with it for a little bit and then bring you back and take a look at it in its uh, final state. So there we have it. So all I did was just uh, file up the edges, the inside and outside circumferences there, and then uh, filled in the indices with some black Sharpie and then just did a real quick and dirty straight graining on it. Uh, so like I mentioned, this is really just my first time trying out this process. So just brought you all along with me on the journey. Uh, a lot of lessons learned. The 3D printed template worked okay. It's really brittle. Uh, this design in particular is so simple that I would probably, if I was gonna redo it and use this actual design, I would just remake it on my rotary table in a piece of aluminum, something that's a little bit more sturdy, less brittle, uh, and it would probably only take me 30, 45 minutes to, to make that template on my rotary table on my milling machine. Uh, so this was really just an, uh, an example to test out both the 3D printed pattern also trying this whole process out on the pantograph. Uh, 
what my actual chapter rings will probably look like is I would like them to be a little bit thinner uh, because I don't want to take away too much of the guilloche dial. Uh, and then at 12 o'clock, what I'm probably going to do is have the chapter ring dip down a little bit, which is going to give me two benefits. So I'll be able to engrave my logo and I've been working on some logo designs. So I'll be able to put my logo at 12 o'clock. Uh, also, it's going to help me index the chapter ring on the dial. So the dial needs to be in a specific orientation for the dial feet to actually attach to the movement. Uh, and I need my 12 o'clock to line up at 12 o'clock so that my three o'clock is exactly where the crown will be. So I'll have to make two templates, one for actually machining the chapter ring and another one for milling out a pocket in the dial for the chapter ring to sit into. So that's what that index is gonna help out with. So overall, I'm pleased with the machine. I'm pleased with how it's working, uh, learning quite a few things, especially with cutter feed, cutter depth, uh, my templating, uh, and some other things. So you can see where the template fractured that my index got too close to the inside. So I've got a little bit too far in and my depth of cut was a little bit too much. The overall cutting of the chapter ring with that eighth inch end mill in the pattern worked out great. Uh, so it's a really great circle. When I was filing it out, I could tell that uh, it's really accurate. So for those who are unfamiliar with what a chapter ring is, basically sits on the dial, gives you your indices. So there it is. Pretty stoked with the results, pretty stoked with how the machine is coming together. Uh, really excited to try some new things out and uh, I'll be documenting more progress of how the chapter rings are turning out and the dials and my watches overall on Instagram. So if you aren't following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me. It's uh, at dmtiffany.timepieces. I post a lot of progress up there and uh, keep you guys up to date with the YouTube videos that I'm producing. So. Really excited for how this is going. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below and I'm happy to uh, answer your questions. Appreciate it. Thanks.